What's up you guys? My name is Mark and welcome to my channel. If you're anything like me, you're constantly looking for better ways to smooth your 3D prints. Every time I look for new ideas on how to smooth parts, this product always pops up. It's called XTC3D and today I'm going to use it to see if it smooths parts as well as it claims. Stay tuned. I purchased this product on Amazon and we'll have a link in the description below in case after this review you want to pick some up too. This product has about 1500 Amazon reviews with most of them being positive. The product claims that it can be applied to PLA, ABS, wood, fabrics, foam, and even paper. At first glance, this stuff just looks to be epoxy. It comes with a part A and a part B that you mix together and then apply to your 3D printed part. In the past, I've used epoxy to coat my 3D prints, which is the big reason why I never felt the need to try this product. However, the XTC 3D product does claim that once the two liquids are mixed and applied, the coating self levels without leaving any brush strokes, which was sometimes an issue I ran into when I was using epoxy. It also claims it could be mixed with metal powders and pigments, making it easy to create unique colors and metal effects. Which, if it does a good job of smoothing parts, I might just have to try in the future. I'm going to test the XTC 3D product on the bottom portion of this Batman Beyond mask. A part like this is incredibly hard to sand because of all the little crevices and unique shapes. I want to see how well the coating actually works at reducing layer lines and eliminating the need for sanding. The product comes with two solutions, part A and part B. I'm going to use the foam brush provided in the box to apply the coating to my print. The instructions say to mix one part B with two parts A by volume for two minutes until the solution is uniform. After mixing, I use the brush to evenly distribute the product over the print. When applying, I took my time to make sure the entire surface was evenly covered so I didn't miss any corners or fine details. After a few minutes of brushing the product on, I went to dip my brush again, but the solution in my cup was already solidified, and it made the plastic cup really freaking hot. Now, obviously the cup was hot because of the thermal reaction taking place between the two-part solution, but I wasn't very pleased that I had less than five minutes of working time before I basically couldn't use it anymore. After I finally got an even coating over the part, I waited 24 hours for it to fully dry and cure. After the coating was dry, this is what the part looked like. It has a really glossy finish, and although you can still see the layer lines, the part is relatively smooth. Now, I could leave things here, but just applying the XTC product wasn't enough to give me the surface finish that I wanted. So, I decided to go even further and sand the part with 320 grit sandpaper. Overall, the part was a lot easier to sand than if I wouldn't have applied the product beforehand. It didn't take nearly as long, and a lot of the small details were actually already smoothed out. After sanding, this is what the part looked like. I'm actually going to end up painting this part, but before I do, I need to add a layer of primer. I just apply one coat of primer evenly over the part. After the primer is added, the part is really smooth and practically no layer lines can be seen at all. So I guess you could say that the XTC 3D product works pretty well if you're still willing to do some of the sanding to get a really nice surface finish. The finish on the part turned out great and it cut down the time I would have spent sanding by more than half. But I'm still not convinced that it's better than just regular epoxy I can get from Walmart or Amazon. As mentioned, I've worked with epoxy in 3D prints before, and if I can remember, the results were pretty similar. But to test this theory, I'm going to smooth out the top half of this Batman Beyond mask using some $14 epoxy I got from Walmart. I'm going to go through the same exact steps I took when I applied the XTC product to get as close of a comparison as possible. I'll have a link in the description below to a similar epoxy product from Amazon that I've also used in the past. The mixing ratio for this epoxy is one part A to one part B by volume. I applied the epoxy evenly over the whole helmet using the same type of foam brush as the XTC product. After waiting 48 hours for the epoxy to cure, this is what it looked like. It provides a practically identical glossy finish to the XTC product. I then sanded the part with 320 grit sandpaper and applied a coat of primer. After the primer was applied, this was the result. As you can see, there is practically no layer lines and the overall surface finish is very smooth. So here are the two parts next to each other. I honestly cannot tell the difference between how each of these parts was smoothed. Both the XTC and epoxy do a good job of covering up layer lines and cutting down on sanding time. So in conclusion, does the XTC 3D brush on coating for 3D prints work? 
Yes, but is it worth it? Uh... In my opinion, no. If you remember, the coating solidified in my cup less than five minutes after using it. And I can achieve pretty much the same exact results by just using generic epoxy, which is half the price. So overall, yes, it works, but I think there's better options out there. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Thank you and stay classy.